So um, let's go back to powerful, strong breath holds because you alluded to the fact that people living with diabetes have to, this is a dose dependent relationship. So you don't want to, you don't want to start by doing this too drastically. You don't want to take very long breath holds. You don't want to do this, uh, you know, significantly to begin with, you want to sort of step into it. So let's go back to that. Let's start over and explain what is the purpose of these strong, powerful breath holds? What's the ideal outcome? And then for people living with diabetes, how can they sort of step into it and take bite-sized chunks to get to a point where they're using this technique to dramatically improve their, uh, their cardiovascular health as well? Okay, great. Well, let's, let's give them a, an exercise they can do right now. It's called unblocking the nose. So okay. all of your listeners mm -hmm. right now, you can take a normal breath in and a normal breath out and when you breathe out, you pinch and you hold your nose, and then you just very gently, you bob your head up and down. So you breathe in, you breathe out, you hold your breath, and you bob your head up and down until you have a very medium reaction to breathe. When you have a medium reaction to breathe, you let go. And you rest for 20 to 30 seconds. And you repeat that six times. And then you'll see whether or not you, if, and most of you are checking your blood sugar levels, so you can see what it does to you, which, like you said, I don't have that ability to do. But if you also had a pulse oximeter on, you would see if your oxygen saturation went down. So that's a very simple way to do it without going right into the stronger breath holds. Okay, but, so let's just clarify here real quick. You take a breath in, you then yeah. plug your nose, no. and nope. Take a breath, normal breath in. Normal breath in. Breath out. Normal breath out. Then plug your nose. And then while your nose is plugged at, after you have exhaled, without breathing back in again, you bob your head up and down. And then yes. you only breathe in when you feel the sensation to breathe in again. Yes. And what that does is it introduces hypoxia into the body. But now people with diabetes are actually living in hypoxia. But this type of hypo hypoxia is uh, generated through the Bohr effect, the Bohr law. So when we hold a breath following a passive exhalation, the hypoxia that we're creating is the liberation of oxygen from hemoglobin. So our hypoxia means that now oxygen is being sent to the circulation, to the organs, to the tissues. You know, so, and because it is dose dependent and hypoxia does induce stress and stress hormones can increase production of glucose, we want to be gentle with it, which is why we use this technique, which is a very gentle technique. So it's like, you know, almost you're holding your breath and you say, okay, I'm starting to feel the need to breathe. You let go. It might only be 15 seconds and you'll be totally fine with that. You can't get hurt with that. Breath holding is pretty safe unless, of course, you take it too far in the beginning, and then that can create too much production of glucose, which would not be beneficial. Okay, so what is the purpose of bobbing your head up and down as you're going through this exercise? Good question. So when you're moving, it produces more CO2, and we need that CO2 to signal hemoglobin to liberate oxygen. And then when you're moving, it also produces more nitric oxide. Exercise produces nitric oxide in the endothelial tissues. So by moving, it creates a higher concentration of CO2, more NO, and uh, we know from a paper by Acevedo in 1995 that hypoxia stimulates glucose transport independent of insulin, which is similar to the effects of exercise. So that's where breath holding can be very good. But again, I'm always going to say it's dose dependent. So you're very gentle with it. But that is important because... If we're, if we're creating hypoxia and we're stimulating the transport of glucose independent of insulin, then that's really important, right? That means that through gentle breath holds, I can start to lower my blood glucose levels, my blood sugar levels, and therefore, I'm actually going to want to exercise. People with diabetes don't generally want to exercise, right, if they're, if they're really suffering because they're under that state of hypoxia. And all of a sudden, people start to feel more energy, and they, they innately, they want to move because movement makes them feel better. But it's the people that are really suffering 
that can't get to that level. So that very small breath technique we just talked about can start to activate that hypoxic effect, which is through the bore effect that will stimulate you to want to move more. Okay, I just had an epiphany as you were talking here because in, in our book, in the Mastering Diabetes book, we talk specifically, we have an entire chapter about exercise. And truth be told, that's one chapter about exercise, but if we really wanted to go into detail about exercise, I could write a thousand pages on exercise and the effect that exercise has on vasodilation, the effect that exercise has on insulin production, the effect that exercise has on uh, glucose uptake at the level of the liver, at the level of the muscle and beyond. But one of the concepts that we talk about is that during and especially after exercise, you, uh, by performing exercise, you actually are rewarded for that exercise with what's called insulin independent glucose uptake. Mm. Insulin independent glucose uptake is the ability of cells inside of your muscle, myocytes, to be able to pull glucose out of the blood without the need for either any insulin or with a significantly reduced need for insulin, right? Wow. So exercise has that, that effect to stimulate insulin independent glucose uptake. But what you're, what you just said is right. that by stimulating hypoxia, you get the same thing, right? Exactly. Right. You stimulate hypoxia, which is yes. truth be told when you exercise, you stimulate hypoxia. That is, that is it, de facto. It happens during exercise. You're just using your breath to almost perform like a tiny mini workout. And that tiny mini workout is like a cardiovascular workout, which enables hemoglobin to say, okay, cool. I don't need these oxygen molecules. Get rid of these oxygen molecules. And as a result of that, it, it, uh, the, the hypoxic situation, the hypoxic uh, state induces glucose uptake without the need for as much insulin. Is that right? Yeah, exactly, Cyrus. You know, the increased insulin sensitiv sensitivity could just be the body's preemptive response to the stress. It knows more sugar is coming, so it primes itself to use it. So yeah. We want to find our Goldilocks zone. We Good want call. to experience hypoxia, but we don't want to allow stress, right? Correct, correct. I like that. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah, so hypoxia strengthens innate immune function, and it increases insulin sensitivity because it transports glucose into the tissues and muscles without the need of insulin, which is exactly what you just said.